Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Krug and I'm working through the 2022 AP Chemistry free response questions. If you learned something from this, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because I'm putting all these FRQs up here as well as I have the entire AP Chemistry course curriculum on my channel in one big long playlist. You can follow along and learn these as you study. Let's take a look at question three. This was one of the long FRQs, which means that it's worth 10 points. And so this is one of those that you do not want to skip. So 3A, uh, we're being asked for a ground state electron configuration of an aluminum atom. So all we have to do is look at the periodic table or whatever mnemonic aid that you use and write out the electron configuration. So it should be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. And so if you write that out, that is uh, the correct answer. Uh, going on to part B here, it asks, based on principles of atomic structure, explain why the radius of the aluminum atom is larger than the radius of the aluminum 3 plus cation. Well, once again, think about this in terms of Coulomb's law, and that helps quite a bit. And so we know that the aluminum cation, that Al3 plus ion, uh, has, has lost three electrons. And so as a result, it has a much higher proton to electron ratio. Okay, and so as a result, according to Coulomb's law, that tells us that the uh, protons, and by the way, there are 13 protons in that aluminum 3 plus ion, are going to uh, be able to, to hold on to, uh, to its 10 electrons much more easily than an aluminum atom and its same 13 protons can hold on to more electrons because it still has 13 electrons. And so think about it in terms of Coulomb's law. You have this aluminum 3 plus that's got 10, I'm sorry, that has 13 protons here in the middle, but it only has 10 electrons. And so there's its its nucleus, and so those electrons are in that electron cloud, and these 10 electrons are being held in much more tightly. It's like a tug of war. Over here, we have the aluminum atom, and it also has the 13 protons, and it has 13 electrons. And so since that ratio is much higher, or actually much lower in this case, we're going to be able to say that, yeah, that aluminum atom is going to be much, much larger. Okay, so you want to talk about it in, in those terms. I would say that that's a, a one point for the electron configuration, one point for that explanation there for part B. Now moving on to part C, uh, this is an interesting question. This is a lab question, and they are uh, basically asking, asking the students how to prepare an aqueous solution of silver nitrate using only the equipment in this list. And as I looked at this, you know, my, my training, I mean, I, I had several analytical chemistry classes in, in my undergraduate career, as well as a graduate level analytical chemistry course. And uh, I personally have some problems with the way that this question was written. I think it was very vague and very unclear. Uh, for example, it tells us we have distilled water. And uh, this is, I mean, where is this distilled water? Is it in a jug? Is it in one of these beakers that it's talking about? Is it in some sort of a spigot? Um, is it in a something else? It's obviously not just floating out in air. So where is this distilled water? They didn't say. And so I got a little problem with that. Also, it tells us about the pipette. And this is very vague as well because there are a few different ways to define what is a pipette. I mean, they may be talking about one of these things, which you probably used in AP Chemistry if you did acid-base titrations. This is a pipette. But uh, this little thing here, 
this little plastic thing is also sometimes called a pipette, specifically a plastic pipette or a plastic barrel pipette. I don't know which of these two things they're talking about. And if it is talking about this pipette, well, they didn't say anything about a pipette bulb. And if you're going to use this thing, you had better have a pipette bulb because you can't use this thing with your mouth and like suck stuff out of here. So they don't mention a bulb. Uh, and yeah, this is separate. You buy this thing here separately than the pipette. And so uh, I don't know what the College Board was thinking when they wrote this question in the way that they did, but uh, I've got some, some problems with it. But I'm going to go ahead and, and answer it the way I would. Uh, you know, you're going to use the weighing paper, of course, uh, and then after that, you're going to want to uh, quantitatively transfer, and that's the name of the process that you use here. You actually quantitatively transfer the solid silver nitrate into the volumetric flask. Okay, now when we say volumetric flask, that's this. This here is a volumetric flask. Okay, and you probably can't see this, but it says, you know, it'll say how much is on here. This happens to be a 500 mil. Uh, we're using a 200 mil in this, ex in this uh, ex example, but there's a little line. You probably can't see it on here. But there's a little tiny line, and you're going to put water into this after you quantitatively transfer the silver nitrate, okay? And you do that by pouring it into the, the flask, okay? There should be an A in there. Now, there's a good chance that when you pour in that silver nitrate into the volumetric flask, there are still going to be a few crystals of that um, that silver nitrate on the weighing paper. So you have to transfer those into the volumetric flask. And this is where you're supposed to uh, squirt some water. And that's one of the problems I have with this is that doesn't give you a squirt bottle to work with. So I would say uh, using water, or, or maybe I suppose a graduate, I guess a graduated cylinder might work, but using some sort of, of tool here, we, we use, always use a, a a squirt bottle for this using uh, maybe a cylinder I don't know uh, using a cylinder uh, transfer the uh, the last few crystals of the silver nitrate into the volumetric flask with distilled water Okay, so once you get all of those crystals into the flask, then you can start adding your water seriously. And so at this point, I mean, it really doesn't matter what you use. A, a beaker is fine uh, for this. And so using a beaker, and we're assuming it's clean, I, I believe, since it says safety measures are taking place, using the beaker, add distilled water up to the point where you are just a few milliliters shy of this line. And so there's a line on here that shows when you have the 200 mils in there, you want to add distilled water just uh, to just shy of the f fill line on the volumetric flask. Okay. Then step five is you're going to use some, some sort of a dropper and this might be where the pipette, I think they intended, maybe they intended it to be one of these little pipettes. If you're going to use these, you're going to have to use a, 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 uh, a bulb of some kind. But I would say using a, let's say a pipette, and let's hope they're talking about the plastic pipette. You add distilled water dropwise. So add it by drops until the bottom of the meniscus is flush with that fill line. Or the, yes, the bottom of the meniscus is flush with the fill line on the volumetric flask. Okay, then the last step is you're going to take the flask, once it's up to the line there, you're going to put the cap on here. So you cap the flask. 
Make sure it's nice and, and sealed up nice and tight. And then you're going to invert it and shake at least 10 times to dissolve the silver nitrate. Okay, so that's what you're doing. You got to cap the flask, and once it's capped and sealed, then you invert it and you shake. Okay, then you in invert it, shake, invert it, shake, and, and you keep doing that 10 times. Okay, that's the way that you do this in analytical chemistry, and then uh, that should dissolve all of your silver nitrate. Okay, so those are the steps, and like I said, uh, I've got uh, some problems with, with the way this question is worded, but uh, that's how that's how you do it. So um, I, I think this would be a three-pointer, and I'm still wondering how they would allot the points. I think they would probably give one point for saying quantitatively transfer the solid by pouring it into a volumetric flask. I think they want I think they want you to say volumetric flask in there. I think they're going to say perhaps a point for adding distilled water to just shy of the line, and then maybe that last point for adding drops until it's at the bottom of the meniscus. So I, I think those are those three points. Apologies, that was probably longer than it should have been, but uh, there were some things that I think needed to be clarified on that. Let's go on to part D, which is I, I think was easier. Well, actually, maybe it wasn't easier, it just was a little bit clearer, or at least better written. So we have an incomplete particulate representation for this reaction here. And here is the overall net ionic equation. So we can take a look at that. And it wants us to complete the drawing on the right side to represent the system at its product state. Now what you want to notice here is that for every one atom of aluminum that reacts, you're going to be producing three atoms of solid silver, okay? So one aluminum that reacts produces three atoms of solid silver. Well, take a look at this. We started with four aluminum atoms, and then we're down to two on the product side. So that tells me that two aluminum atoms have reacted. So if two aluminum atoms reacted, that means we need to draw six atoms of silver in the solid state in this beaker here. So six atoms of silver, and those need, need to be drawn kind of big. And also the spacing, since it's a solid, I want to draw them kind of, kind of clumped close together to show that they're actually in the solid state. So AG, AG, and another AG. I know I'm not supposed to go out the beaker, but I'm going to do my best here. And then we have another AG. You, you basically want to have six of these, OK? and they're clumped together to show that they're in the solid state. Okay, so we have those six. Now, notice that on the left side we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight silver ions. Well, we only have six silver atoms produced, so those other two silver uh, ions are still, swimming around, are still swimming around in solution. I gotta be careful here to draw these smaller than the silver atoms there. So I have to be very careful here. And I probably drew that one a little too big, but you know, draw AG plus a little on the smaller side. Okay. Now, next we have the aluminum. Notice that we have uh, four aluminums on the left side, all atoms. Two are aluminums on the right side. Okay. Well, where are the other uh, two aluminums? Well, they have to be swimming around in solution. Okay. So we're going to have to draw these other two aluminums swimming around in solution as well. And I have to draw them pretty small. I have to draw them smaller than that right there. So that's how I draw this. Okay, so that's how this one is going to be done. And so uh, I'm thinking about the point breakdown here. I'm, I'm thinking this is a two-pointer. I believe that they'd give you one point for drawing the six silver atoms like this. I think that they would give you two point, uh, give you the second point for drawing these other four ions, two silvers and two aluminums swimming around in solution like that. So hopefully that is what you put for your answer. Now moving on to part E, in fact E, F, and G, we have electrochemistry. And so if we have a galvanic cell here, and it says using the standard reduction potentials, calculate the value of the E for this reaction. 
okay? And it tells us this is a galvanic cell. So we need to use the equation E cell equals E of the cathode minus E of the anode. And so the uh, E cell in this galvanic cell has to be a positive value, okay? Galvanic cells always positive. In, in their E cell. So that means we have to arrange these numbers here in such a way that we get a positive value. And so in my videos, we say that, you know, it could be 0 0.80 minus negative 1.66, or it could be negative 1.66 minus 0 0.80 volts. Which one gives you the positive E cell? Well, it's the first one. It's this. Okay, and so by the way, that tells us that the 0.8 volts, that's the silver one, is the cathode, and that the aluminum, the second one there, is, is the anode. Okay, so we have, we have that. Now, whenever we do the, the, the math on this, I get a value that E cell equals positive 2.46 volts. So one point for that. Now F, it says based on the value of E0, would the standard free energy change of this reaction uh, delta G be positive, negative, or zero? And the way you answer this is by looking at the equation delta G equals negative NFE. And the number of electrons transferred here is always a positive number. Faraday's constant is always a positive number. And E in this equation is a positive number. But notice this. The way that this is written, delta G always has the opposite sign as your E cell. So in this case, since the voltage or the uh, E cell is positive, that means delta G has to be negative. So delta G must be negative because E cell is positive. Okay, so you want to have some explanation like that. One point for that explanation. And then part G, once the reaction appears to stop progressing, and by the way, in chemistry, we call that equilibrium. Would the change in free energy, delta G, be positive, negative, or zero? And it says justify your answer. Well, uh, one thing that we talk about in my videos, and hopefully in your AP Chemistry class too, is that at equilibrium, E cell for any galvanic cell equals zero volts. So if you were to plug zero volts into this equation here, you know, if E is a zero, well then guess what delta G is going to be? It's got to be zero also. And so if, if E cell is zero, delta G is also equal to zero. Okay, so that's one point for that explanation. So there's a lot going on here. Ten points. Hope you got them all. Hope you got a lot of them at least. And if you enjoyed this, if you got uh, something out of this, please give me a thumbs up. I hope you subscribe to my channel. It was uh, a lot of fun working through these and I hope you get a chance to look at the others. And if you're taking AP Chemistry next year or at some point in the future, I uh, hope you use my review videos. Hope you use any resources that you have available to you to get the best score that you can. Thank you for joining me on, the, on these. Hope you subscribe, like I said, and thanks for watching. Hope to see you again on my channel where we can learn some more chemistry together. Together.